Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday's Facebook Live with So Steady and Kate Quinn. I love sharing rulers with you because they're so awesome. <laughs> so today I have something a little bit different, a little bit new. It's not a class that I've ever done or even a template that I've showcased before. This is a sample that I made many years ago and uh, I made it because a friend of mine bought these templates and there is a picture on the cover and she wanted to be able to make something like what, what was on the cover. So I'll show you. This is Leonie West's original design and I love how you get a little bit of extra texture right there in the center. And my friend was like, well, how do I do that? And I'm like, I don't know. So I borrowed her stuff and we played and this is what happened and it turned out so great. I've had the sample for a long time and people have asked me about it so many times and I have never done anything education wise with it. So hi Judy, nice to see you here too. Hi Helen. We'll say hi to a couple people. Hi Susan. So the template set from this group is called the Spinifex Feathers, and it even has a number. It says Spinifex number eight. See that? I don't know why it says number eight. Maybe she had some other ones, but it's the only Spinifex Feathers we have. The set has multiple different sizes. You can see right here, it's got a couple different sizes. So what I thought we'd do is just show a few of the different ways that you can use this. And I'm going to also add in my 12 inch arc and my favorite half inch between the lines circle just to break up the design a little bit. You can see that she's used it sort of as an all over design, which is great. But I like having just a little bit of variety to sort of break up all of the feathers. So here's the other thing we're gonna do. And you guys are gonna have to bear with me. Can I have that other fabric, baby? The pink one? That's the one I'm sewing on today, Th that pink one. Thanks, I'm sorry. It was miscommunication. He was cleaning up for me and uh, set it aside. Okay, so I'm gonna put this up here. Let's put the feathers up here really fast. We'll use the big one so that you can see it really good. Oh, there we go. So let's see if we can tip this so we can give you a really good view of the template itself. So this is the five and a half, and it has, as I said, several different sizes. I'll show you how the biggest one that is in this group. Look how big it is, it's huge. So that's my hand, and it's just inside hand space. You know, like if I stretch my fingers, they're bigger than the edge of this. But this is still really easy to hold on to. This is the seven and a half. And I'm gonna show you a couple things. It has this A and B line. And I think you guys have probably caught on by now that I really struggle with this whole alphabet thing. <laughs> I think it works great for some people, but I like to just go ahead and sew it sort of my own way. So you might see I'm not necessarily gonna refer to the letters they are useful and we'll kind of talk about when they can be more or less useful. You know, sometimes I don't use them at all and sometimes I do. So we'll kind of discuss when that's appropriate. These lines will be the reference lines as you rotate the design, just like any spin effects. You can use those then to line up with the previous stitching. Okay, and then I'll show you one more thing before we go. This is the five and a half. And right down here, this line and this line that goes across, if my foot sinks right into there, these mark where the needle position will cross. So right there and right there in the center is where the needle position will be if the foot is snugged up right there. So let's go ahead and start. Let me put this down just in case I need it later. So if you have any trouble hear me, hearing me, or if you feel like you're, you can't uh, see very well, let me know. We can make some adjustments. Um, I, I can see the camera's a little cattywampus, but I'll just kind of see if I can adjust that. There we go. So the different thing that I'm going to do, and I, I have done this before, but not often, is I'm gonna use this. 
it's really bright, but I know you guys always are asking me, can you please do it on a quilt so we can see how they go on a quilt? So you can see this one has all kinds of seam allowances, just regular. You can see that one's open. Some of them are open. Some of them are not. Um, this one right here, I can feel that this one right here, this is not open right there. This one is pressed towards this block. So it kind of depended on right here, it was really bulky coming in. So by pressing this intersection right here open, I could reduce the bulk a little bit. And then in some other areas, I didn't. So like right here, I can feel that these are bulkier right there where the little star points are. Whereas like right here, it's really flat. So different choices that you have. I don't have any rule for myself. I kind of have learned over time that I'm gonna do whatever makes it easier for me to piece the quilt. So because this quilt has a really defined fancy star in the center, I wanna go ahead and put the basic design right in the center. So the first thing I have to do is put my crosshair square right on there and mark that center. I'm going to go ahead and use the eight point crosshair. Because this is a spin effects, I don't have to, but I can if I want to. I can use a different spin effects. So let's see if we can get it lined up on the correct block size. I think this is five, about right there in the center. That's about five. So right here, right up here, I'm letting those corners cross right where they should. Let's see, I'm having trouble getting them right in line. There we go. So it's not quite five. It looks like it's about four and a half. These intersections on the 45, when they cross the block, that's when you have it all set up properly. So let's go ahead and get my chaco liner so we can mark. Um, hopefully that'll work. If it doesn't show really good, we may end up changing to a different marking tool. Probably will show up okay on the orange, but maybe not on this purple. But I don't think it'll matter once we get to the purple. I don't know, guys. I can't see the lines. What do, you, what do we think? I think we're going to mark it with something else. We need something a little darker. So you can see, too. So I'm not sure there's any admin on today, right now, except me. Um, I'm usually doing this by myself. I just saw that there might be some spammers. Remember that we never ask for any money. You don't have to sign up for anything to view this. There's no credit card required. There's no registration. Just stay here and watch for free. Okay, and then I'll go back later and I will um, box out all of those um, spammers if anybody's on there trying to get you in there. Please don't click on any of those things. This is free and open to the public. It's a public page. You don't have to do anything. Okay. All right, so let's see, we got some lines, right? So we got our crosshair lines. And I think let's go ahead and use the really big one for this. Oh, you guys, look, I messed up. I didn't do my center line. Okay, if that ever happens to you, just take whatever straight edge you have and line it up right in the center. And then we'll just go like that. And we'll just mark it. I just need this center mark right there because that's where we're going to start this design. So let's start. So today I'm using wool batting and this is really, really fat. Can you see it? Super lofty. So this is a uh, Tuscany wool heirloom batting. Love it. It's awesome. All right. It's very thick, so that means I might have to adjust my foot height. Let's put this in, get, get our threads out of the way. Cannot pick up that little guy on the bottom. He's, he's a little ornery. All right, and let's get ourselves set with our needle right in the middle. Did you see that? I pinched my finger. Oh, <laughs> I guess don't do that. Make sure your finger's on the other side. Okay, here I'm flipping around, I'm talking. If I had a longer line, let me show you my problem here. If I use this really big one, I can tell that I don't have as long of a line 
on my crosshair. So if you wanna use your bigger crosshair, that's a good idea, you should definitely do that. When I'm just gonna go around, all the way around, I'm not going to use A or B, okay? Because that way, every single one of those will be completely double stitched and I'm gonna come back to the center and rotate and line up each of the lines. So, here we go. All right, we'll take a few of those tacking stitches. If things aren't working good, you know, as far as seams or my foot needs to make an adjustment, I'm always paying attention to that so that I can see it. I'm stitching right into the hook right there. And now I'm just gonna go backwards. So I'm keeping everybody right in place. With this design, even if I stitched back to this B, I still have to double stitch this area. So in my mind, I'm like, well, if I'm gonna double stitch all of that, I might as well just go back to the center, right? And then what I get is I get that really clean design all the way down. I get a lot of the thread laid down and it's really beautiful. So then I can easily turn right around the foot right here. I don't have to worry about like if I'm exactly positioned or if I'm off, as long as I'm in the center of the design, then I'm good. So checking my position as all spin effects we want to make sure. Now let's see if we can just tip this slightly. I want to show you the alignment right here. Can you see right by the A? This part right here, this little white line is going to line up exactly on this stitch line. So I can just get it aligned right there, just press it into place and then I'm lining up right on this center line, and now I'm ready for the next one. So I'm using a purple thread, and it's actually, it's Magnifico thread by Superior, and then I've got uh, Wonderfill Invisifil in the bottom. So you can see right there, my foot is flagging a little bit, so what that tells me is that I need my foot to go down a little bit. So I'm gonna just move it down a few notches and we'll see what happens. We'll see if it's gonna sew a little better. So right in there, there, I can feel that there's some seams, but notice how I'm avoiding this center seam right there, Woo, cause it's really fat. So now I can just keep rotating. I'll get lined up again right here, right on this existing stitch line and then right here, right in the center, I'm lined up. Okay, so here we go. So see if we can tell if there's any flagging, right? Does, I don't see any fabric bumping up and down right now. I think it looks good. So right here, when I come into this one, if I'm off just a little bit, it's possible that I could stitch past this line right there, right here. So what I like to do is I'm looking inside the foot and as soon as I touch the line with the needle, stop. Even if there's a little bit more space where I could stitch past, I always want to respond to the existing design. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll stitch back. Now, let's talk about the design, right? We've got a lot of amazing piecing right here, and what we're doing is completely disregarding the piecing at all. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely, that's totally your call. You should feel confident about, if, if you want to enhance the piecing, that's one choice for your design, but many, many times when I'm long arming, I'm choosing a design that's just gonna go over everything, and it doesn't matter if it matches the piecing or not. Although we are a little bit responding by creating sort of a center medallion here. So right here, I'm looking to touch the existing line and then I'm actively going back the other way. So if you have some questions, Honey's here right now and he's, he's responding, I can hear him typing and answering questions, so if you have any, just let, let me know. And if there are questions that are something that would be good for everybody, then we'll try to answer those online. If you, if you have a private question, I can tell that he's kind of answering some of those. Oh, 
Oh, you guys, Honey's so awesome. He took the initiative to go and uh, block the spammers as best he could. So hopefully, he's, he's my tech genius. He's a really smart, savvy tech guy. So he's, uh, he's on it. He, he didn't even need me to say anything. All right, so I know that I'm rotating. If you're at home, do you have to rotate your sandwich? No, you don't have to. You can just keep going. So here, I'll show you. When we do these, I'll line these two up and I won't rotate for the next one. I'll just turn the ruler, but I won't rotate the sandwich. So you can see that you don't have to either. So right here, just touch and just come on back. So this thread is 40 weight polyester, trilobal polyester on the top, and it's really shiny. And so it's gonna add a lot of fun dimension. And we're actually gonna put some this is kind of a big open space, so I'm gonna show you a fun little fill that we can put in there that'll give a little bit more quilting depth. Ooh, right, don't turn. Okay, we turned the ruler, so I'm just gonna get everybody lined up right here, and this, you can see I have the little space for my foot to sink right down in there. Let me show you one other thing. Notice when we get this lined up that this right here is actually lined right up on the existing stitch line right there. So this is another reference, a visual reference that you can use to say, hey, yeah, I'm right. I'm lined right up on that line, so that's good. Okay, so then I'll give it a little smush, make sure we're all in place. Here, we'll touch. And back to the center. And you can see right here, we've come back to the center many times, right? You can see how many times you can see all those lines. And that's something that's gonna add a little bit more of thread in the center. The reason I like that is that pulls your eye to the center. And that is something that will be great for this particular block because we want people to visually look to the center and then move your eye around. So pretty cool, it's gonna look good. So here, I'll, I'll do it, no turning, right? Just turn the ruler. So I'll line up right here and I'll line up right here. I'm looking right here. If the line was longer, it would be a little bit easier, but I'm just gonna trust that I'm gonna do it. Let me show you one thing that we need to show you before we sew. We've gone all the way around. We've got eight uh, lobes of this particular one. Right there is the end. So here, the little lines on both sides, we want both sides to match up. What that tells me, if they're both sides matched, then I can put this right here and I know I'm gonna cross right on there at the quarter inch. So I know that my design will close perfectly, right? So should I, should I go back the other way? No, I'll do it this way, because I want you to see right here what we're gonna do. We're gonna end up coming right along there. Okay. And now we'll touch. And we hit exactly right on the line. That's something I really love about Leone West's tools. They are so, so effective and so accurate. So you can see, let me see if we can get you in there so you can see that really good. Ooh, can you see it? Look at that, isn't that amazing? Pretty awesome. So that is where these little reference lines right here are really gonna be valuable for you as you're going. That helps you really have super amount of accuracy with this design. So let's take it off. Again, this one has a key. So we can pull this off if we want to. And look it, doesn't that look so pretty? Let's get out. I guess you can't see it, huh? We'll scoot back out and give you a little better view. There, how's that? You know, so the thread is really subtle. It's not really, really dark. What we don't want is, say I use like darker blue thread or, you know, really burnt orange thread or maybe like this red or something. The piecing here is unique. It's pretty. That is really all the time that I spent making that part amazing. And so I kind of want this quilting to be a secondary 
element to give this puff and everything else, but I don't want it to take over. So in this instance, I'm using the quilting as a pretty emphasis, but it's not the star. The, this is the star right here, obviously, right? Of course. <laughs> so what we're gonna do with this, we need a little bit more quilting, I think, in here. This is kind of a big space to leave open. So the very next thing we're gonna show you is how to do some really cute uh, little flourishes with these templates. And this will work with any of them, with every size. Let me get some new tape. This tape is the original. Yeah, it's right there, thank you. Okay, and if you're ever using um, the keys, right, I like to just fold this at a little 45, make a little triangle right there, just close that up. And what this does is that's a cute little pull tab. It's very effective so that you can take your key on and off. Go ahead and put your tape up near the edge of the template, right? Don't put it back here, put it up here where the foot is gonna travel because this is where we want the stability. So let's see, I just saw a question. Somebody says, do I use rounded designs to soften all the angles on the block? This is from Donna Dean. Donna, I often like some kind of curvy nature with straight angles because this is all straight. There's really not any curves on this. I think that this is a nice way to blend visuals with this design. It is gonna soften it. It's gonna create a little motion. It's gonna prevent it from being super stiff. And I like that. And the fact that I, I can come in and I could do all kinds of straight line work in here, or I could just do like uh, curves here, like a corner to corner curve and echo. We are gonna put some arcs in there like I talked about already. So that's, that's just totally up to you. There's no right or wrong to that. You should feel like whatever you like, that's what you should do. There's no rule on that, but I do that a lot. So, okay, so anyway. Yeah, okay, so the bobbin thread is this Invisafil 100 weight, super fine. I'll flip it over a little bit later so that you can see it, but that's the, see how fine that is? It's really fine. <laughs> so we'll flip it over. And the reason that I use that color on the back is then the quilting will be what shows and the texture, because it's gonna match this color right there. Okay, and then on the top, I wanted to use something, I felt like the purple would kind of sink in a little better with this and even on the blue, but you're not gonna see it much here. You're really only gonna see it here on the orange. So this is gonna be a lot more subtle out on these other colors, okay? So the top thread is a really lightweight purple Magnifico. The color number is 2120. Magnifico is made by Superior and it's a 40 weight polyester thread. Okay, so let's put these little fun um, flourishes. Sorry, I was losing my brain. So let's go ahead and start. Right now, I'm gonna just say that if this is the design, visually I'm looking at the center. So for right there, I kind of want to come into the center. Now I could make a mark right here, but you see I already have a line. This little white line is part of the alignment on this side. So for the first one, I think that I'll use this as the reference because it's already on there. I don't have to do anything, which I love. So every time that I put one of these in, and I'm gonna just kind of go to the center, not all the way, and does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. There's no rules, right? So here's the white line. I'll line it up and I'm just gonna try to come to the middle of the design and not all the way to the top. So nobody's gonna take out their ruler and measure how far to the top that I've come, right? Unless you are. This is gonna add a little bit more puff. It's gonna add a little bit more stitch detail towards the center, which again is gonna bring your eye into the center. Okay. 
and then we'll just keep going. So this line right here, it's right on the outside, the first straight line. And that's just a line that you can use to reference as you go around. You know how the spin effects always have these lines? But we can use them for other purposes. So for here, we're using that as an alignment mark to get us into the center. So let's talk about that one more time. This line right here, if you look, see how it kind of puts us right in the middle right there when we line that up? It's gonna make a lobe. So if I wanted to have lobes right in the middle, I could do that too. Lots of great resources always on these tools. So we're on this leg right here. Rotate to get your line aligned. And then we'll put the little flourish in. And I think it's fine if they're different heights and stuff like that. I think that's normal. It looks more natural, what you might see in nature where, you know, not everything is robotically, perfectly, exactly the same. So I'm good with that. We'll just keep moving these threads out of the way. I can't really easily cut them because they're kind of at the center. I think people sometimes ask me why I leave them there. I just find it more convenient to just move them out of my way until I have everything done. And I just, I keep moving them so I don't stitch through them. I just kind of get them out of my way. So I think we have one more. Now, again, on the line. And then I'll just do one of these additional items that I wanna put in here. This is the largest one, and it ends up with a really big opening right here. So I actually want to put a little bit more detail in each of these. The way that I can do it we did the first one because that gave us the center position. So right here, out on this edge, I'm gonna use my half inch spacing gauge. So let's see if we can just scoot down. I wanna show you that alignment. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm scrolling down a little bit so I can kind of catch up with your comments. Let's see, okay, so I'm kind of down where you guys are, where the conversation is. So right here, just kind of random, you know, you can do it at the tip, but I want to echo kind of right out here. So right on the edge there, that's where I'm looking for putting it a quarter inch away. Again, this is very flexible. This is random rule time. This is going to make the curve touch at a quarter inch out here. See how the foot is Touching right here, the whole foot is a, is a half inch, but the needle is in the middle. And I want these to be a little shorter because that's gonna give a little bit of dimension. Now, right here on this side, if I line it up where it's touching, it's the same thing on this side. So by putting that in the center initially, we are creating a little depth. So we'll make the inside one a little longer. Okay, now I can just keep going around. So the, I'll do one more just so we can get the flavor of it. If this is the center alignment, on this side, we'll use half of an inch with the spacing gauge, and that's gonna put us a quarter inch away on that side. And this side, we're gonna do it a little shorter so we won't come all the way up. And then this is our center line, and we'll scoot this over so it's touching the line right here. And on this one, we're just gonna come out a little bit further. Not much, just a little bit. There's a seam right there, could you hear it? It's thumpy. Okay, and because this design starts in the center and ends in the center, I can just tie this off right here with some extra thread, and it's fine. Now. Let's pull it out. We'll show you what it looks like. If I have a quilt design and a block where the center is a big knot of seams, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's cut all of this and give you a nice clean look. All right, I'm just going to get all this thread out of the way. So the size that we did for this was the seven and a half inch size. 
and let's scoot up just a little so we can get a nice wide angle on this. Okay, doesn't that look awesome? It is so pretty. Of course, the lines, I think, make it look a little messy. So you can see there's a lot of thread is gonna start building up around there with all of our little flourishes because we still have six more to go. Let's just tip it a little bit so you can see. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is where you're gonna see this thread is gonna build up in each one of these. By doing it at the center, we kind of divided this so that we can put a detail on each. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not really too worried about if it is or not. I just wanna be able to create this beautiful texture right here where the fabric tightens up and gives you that puff. So even one, I think, adds a lot of definition to it, but you can do more as you want to. It's just your call. All right, so now I was gonna flip it over, right? Ah. So this is a matching thread, and now what you see is you just see really that texture. Okay, you don't see a lot of color change or anything else. All you're seeing is just the texture of that quilting. And so right here, you really can see the, the difference, right? With these extra lines, see how much of a difference this is gonna make? So, you know, if you're using the really small one, you may not have enough room for a lot of texture like that. And, and that's okay. You know, it's just uh, whatever you feel like your quilt really needs. All right, let's flip it over and let's add another one. So right here, we can pick some spot, any spot, and we're gonna put like a little rotational flange in here. So I want it to kind of be in this line right here. And I do want it to intersect this as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pick a little bit of a smaller template for this one this time, because this space is not as big. And I want kind of a repeatable spot. So let's see how big that is. Um, okay, I think we'll come in just enough so that this foot, I don't wanna be, well, I guess I could use that. That seam is probably good. This one is the one that's really flat, and these ones are the ones that are really bulky. But this one is all open, so it's a pretty, pretty flat. It feels good. I think we'll just use that, and I think that's a good spot right there. I do want it to cross over here. You can see that that's bigger than a quarter inch, because what I want is I'm going to stitch here and stop, and what that will give me is that will make it so that right here, this one will look like it's underneath. So we'll actually kind of complete this one when we come around. So let's see what we can do on the outside. Oh, perfect, it's gonna to totally fit on the outside. It'll be kind of out here, not all the way, but to the edge. So let's put our needle right in the center there. This one, we're going to do it quite a bit different than we did the other one. And this is the one where you, you may end up using those letters because you might need to. So we'll talk about when that might be something that you'll need to do. So we can start anywhere, but if we want to make it symmetrical, let's kind of start right here. We'll line this right up on the intersection right here. This is something we can repeat on each quadrant. So let's come back in, get you in a little tighter. There we go. Make sure you can see really good. All right, let's see if we have any questions so far. What do you think? A couple recent ones are kind of on the can you talk about tension when you have a hundred weight thread on top and 60 on the bottom? And what's your tips on using different color bobbin, top and, bo top and bottom? Okay, um, so I'm gonna repeat the, the two different questions that I got. The first one is, can you comment on tension when you have different weights of thread? So right now, you guys saw the back of my quilt and you didn't see any purple showing through. And on the top here, when you're looking, you're not seeing a lot of the blue coming up from the bottom. So what that means is that the knot of the two threads is balanced in the middle. So that the two threads are kind of hooking over each other like this, but this hook of these two 
is actually in between the layers of the fabric in the batting. If the, the hook, if the top thread pulls the bottom thread up and so that I can see the bottom thread up on the top, so like if I could see the blue all the way up here on the top, that means that that purple is pulling it up so hard. It's just yanking it up to the top and trying to give it air. And it doesn't want any air. It wants to be under the water. It's a fish, right? And then if the, uh, the blue, which is the bobbin, if I can see the purple hanging out under the water, he's drowning. He's not doing his job. He's got to swim. So he's got to pull harder if I have that purple on the bottom. And that is the same with any weight of thread. You can always adjust. Our machines today are just so fantastic. I think when I was first sewing, I remember, you know, the home ec teacher slapping me and saying, no, don't touch that tension dial, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you couldn't get the right tension to make that stitch really beautiful. Well, now we can. So really you can use any weight and any color. One thing I will tell you is that sometimes if the threads are dramatically different colors, like let's say you have black on the bottom and white on the top, it's common that you may get a little dottiness in your thread with that high of a contrast. So between the two threads that I'm using, let me show you, there's not that much contrast. I'll just see if I can put these two up here for you to see, hang on right? I mean, there is, I know there is, but, but this one is so fine and this one is just blending in. So this one, because it's fine, it also blends, you know, you, even though the color differential is very big, you don't really see it because the weight of this thread is so fine. And I think that that's the key. I'll be the first one to tell you that sometimes if I can't make the combination work, I'm just going to switch to a different thread. <laughs> I'm not going to torture myself to try and make something work that doesn't, that's just too hard. So I do sometimes say, okay, this combination is not working. It looks too dotty. I just have to find something that's a little softer and, and I'm okay with that. So the tension is pretty good for many machines. You can get a really great balance, but if you can't just try something else, it's okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next one. So we're, we're lined up right here on this center line. And this is gonna be something that we can repeat. As we sew in here, I'm gonna to touch, but I don't want to cross over, okay? I want this to look like it's underneath this one that is on the top. So, here we go. So touch. Now here I can still do any kind of rotations, but I don't want to rotate all the way. I'm not looking for a line or a number or anything. All I want to do is just create some space. So let's use our spacing gauge. This is something people always ask me. They're like, what can I do with these other legs on my spacing gauge? Let's use that one because we can. I am just going to set it like this right around that B line, right sort of at the back. And now let's just keep sewing. So if it's one inch, the space difference here is going to be three quarters of an inch at that wide part where we measure. Okay. And I think I'll adjust my center because it looks like I'm maybe a stitch off. That'll help keep this clean instead of having a different return every single time. Okay, and we'll just rotate and we'll keep this same relationship, this one inch, and we'll put the next one in. And the same thing, you're looking just about right there, right sort of where that B is. And again, it, it's no, there's no rules, it's okay. If it's a little bigger or a little smaller, or you create your own pattern, you can make it whatever, whatever you want. You can do wide and then skinny if you wanted to create a pattern, and that would look great. 
So let me show you where we're going. So we're getting this kind of, I guess we have to do a few more before we, we show you. Okay, so we'll just keep doing a few. We want to create a visual pattern and then I'll show you it. So we're just going to use the same center point each time. We're just going around. So this one until it touches and then coming back. This is going to give us a lot of great thread throughout our design. We're going to have a lot of thread laid down because a lot of this is doubled up. I don't have any problems with that. Do you guys sometimes feel like you have trouble with that? Some people say that they have trouble following the design. So right here, when I touch, you can't let go of all of this right here. Keep your hands on the ruler and keep the position. And the key is not to be pressing down super hard down. You really just want to keep it a nice firm grip. So as I'm coming back here, I just want to keep the foot against it. But if I push really hard, I could push myself off of the line. So it's about keeping firm, steady grip, but not anything that is like, oh, don't, don't put like all of your pressure on there. And don't put all of your pressure against the foot either. Because that's, I think, when the ruler kind of goes, whoop, and just moves right out of your way. So let's do a couple more and then we'll take it off. We don't have to go all the way around. We can just do whatever we want, you know. If you want to go and you want to make this complete circle, you can, but you don't have to. All right, so we'll touch. And I'm not sure how many of these that we have on here, but let's take it off anyway. So here's our key. Again, I have to put some new tape on. This is, must have been before I started doing the, um, those cool little pull tabs, because none of these have a pull tab. So I'm just gonna wiggle that carefully. And I like to put these on the top. You know, I don't know why I have it on the bottom here, but I like to put that tape on the top because it's so much easier to get it off. So like if we do it right here, let me grab one of those bits of tape. All right, right here, see? Let's put this fold in it. And then I'll just put that on there right near the key edge. And then I can pull this up if I need to pretty easily. When you put it on, just run your finger right along this cut and make sure that this is really smooth. Because sometimes if it's not seated just right, it can be a little bit of a bump. And that'll make sure you get a nice smooth stitch around there. All right, so let me flip it so you can see what we're doing. I'm not gonna take it off because we're gonna put a different size on there and just go for broke right? Look at how cool that looks. Can you see it? This creates kind of like a flowing feather where it kind of looks like a ripple as it smooths one right into the next. This is the five and a half size and something that I like to do with this is I want to put a different size on and just kind of go down and grade it to make it smaller. So let's just do that real quick and we'll do a couple rotations of that same element but we'll do it just a little bit smaller. That's one of the great features of having the different sizes is that you can easily do that. So this one you see has a pull tab, amen to that. <laughs> it does have a pull tab and I still can't get it open. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we'll put that on, make sure our grips are down. And you can really see now that that size is changing. So get that on there, put that tape right near that edge, and just make sure that we have it really secure and that we can feel it's really good. So we could use the same relationship that we did before. We'll use that one inch, and that's gonna help us create that unity even though the size is changing. Okay? So touch. You'll see I kind of slow down when I connect. That way I don't overshoot it. I'm so happy that they have those colored spacing gauges. I would always lose mine. And I absolutely love having it on that pink lanyard because that just really helps me find him. <laughs> 
So having changes in size with a design is a really great way to show some depth because it looks like they're all the same, but then the ones that are bigger are gonna be more closer to you and the ones that are smaller look like they're in the background. So that's really gonna give some added depth to our design, which is cool. So pretty soon as we go around in our design, we're gonna end up coming back to that beginning space and then we're gonna talk about how we do that over under if we are all starting at the same position. So we might have to do some little navigating in order to finish out our design. So we'll just keep going, finishing these up. So I'm pretty fortunate. I, I saw a little bit of flagging early on, but right now it's sewing pretty well. Even right there where that seam is, it's doing pretty good. It's not giving me any skip stitches or any kind of weird behavior, which is great. And I know that does happen sometimes. Sometimes if you have really bulky seams, if you can use a seam mallet before you quilt it, or if you can do an extra good press right before you baste everything. So like right there, I had to really hold everything in place right there because there's a little bit of a, a big seam knot right there and I could feel that, I spoke too soon, right? But, so I got a little bit of a pull right there where I had to kind of force that over that because it was binding just a little bit because right there, all of those, that seam is not pressed open right there. Okay, so we're almost down to our last little one. So we're just gonna maybe do one more right there. And he's not going to touch all the way to the, uh, the other one. But here, I'm gonna stop right there and just rotate this, keeping this on the center and now I'll see if I can just tuck this one right into the other one. So I might need to come up one or two stitches and then I can hook this in there and I'm just gonna sew and connect that right there. So that'll give me that idea that that's behind. So right here, we'll tack it in place. And if I wanna repeat this on the other side, I might count and try to do maybe the same number um, it's, it's flexible. If you don't care if the numbers are exactly the same, then don't worry about it. You can just do some of the big one and then some of the small one. And I'll go ahead and I'll tie this off and then we'll just pull that out so you can see. All right, let's cut that. Let's get these center threads here too. We'll get those out of the way. Oh, I love it. It looks awesome. So you can see that we have a different size, right? Where we, this one's shorter. And obviously this is not gonna be round, you know, because these are shorter. This is gonna have more push. If that's bothering you, that's where we're gonna go with our next one. All right, so because it's not round anymore, I'm gonna show you how we can sort of roundy this up and create a little bit more different detail. Okay, so let's get our size back out. This one is bigger, so this is the five. This one was the, let's see, four and a half, and this is the five and a half. So now I can put this back on, and I'm gonna do a little offset here, and I'll put my thread right back in the top. Oh, darn it, I can't pick it up, there we go. So let's get these threads under here. One of the things that I love about using different sizes, especially in the spin effects line, is because you have the same shape, a lot of times you can use that to echo 
So what we can do here is we're lining this up as if this were right in the center. You can even stick your pinky finger right there as your guide. And now we can just come on over like this and that'll be a little echo. And then we'll rotate again and get lined up. So we're right in the center here. And this will be an echo right across the top of this one. And we're stopping right here when the foot is touching. And then same thing here. I've got everybody lined up right in the center. And we'll just echo that until the foot touches. Check the alignment each time. All right, and right here again. So each time we'll be able to get a little bit of an echo. And I'm not too worried if it's exactly on the same place each time. You'll see that when we get to the end, it's still gonna look great. It's just gonna create a little bit of uh, balance back to that symmetry because we're not actually a circle. This will, this will make it a circle because this is the same relationship as the other one. But it'll also look like there's maybe some layers underneath. So right here, this is the one that would go underneath, right, of this one. So let's go ahead and get that all aligned. And here I'm gonna just travel on this existing line right here until I touch the ruler and then I'll close it right there. I think we might even be able to get one more in. Let's see. No, I think that's about it. Okay, so let's tie it off and then we'll pull it out and show you. So with these, you can echo as much as you want. If you're using the largest size, you could even find a circle that is bigger and you can just echo with a circle. So let me grab this real quick and I'll show you what I mean. All right. So let's cut these threads. We've got everybody tagged in. And then it's just going to create like a little cloud. So let's flip it and we'll show you how it looks on the back. Oh, doesn't that look so cool? I don't know. Can you see it really good? Isn't that fun? I love how these kind of blend into each other. And then this one kind of looks like he goes behind. But now we've still created that visual symmetry. And this is an echo that you can do with any of them. And then I was going to see, I think I've got my two inch circle right here. Hang on just a sec. Let me grab it. Let's see if it's hiding. Well, I think we can do it a couple of different ways. Let me see. I can't find my two inch circle. It must be um, taking a vacation or something, but if you have the sampler set, you can actually use your clamshell right there and you can use that as an echo. So you would sew in and you can echo into the next one here with this is the three inch clamshell. And then this one would even allow you a wider echo. This is the four inch arc. And if you needed a wider echo, you could put this out or put it on there and you'd have to play with it. You might have to do like one side. I think this is probably a better fit. But I also think if you have like a two and a half inch circle, that might be the perfect size for using with the seven and a half inch. So always you can combine the templates to get more and to get a lot of cool value out of it. So what I would do at this point, if I was doing this is I would put whatever little arc in here that I wanted to put in and then I would want to match it up. So maybe we'll do these two corners, at least get the outside shape and then we'll put the little bridge with the little circles in there. How does that sound to you guys? Does that sound good? Let's see, I'm gonna check through for some questions real quick. Tell me the backing fabric. Jay, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's brush strokes or something like that. I, I don't know who the manufacturer is. I'll see if I can find it. Why didn't I make lines for the smaller one? Um, Susan Tapp, did you see why I didn't make lines? Because I, for the smaller ones, I wasn't following the line, I was following the spacing, right? When we did this one, 
I wasn't trying to make the lines follow the crosshair. I was just trying to space them with that one inch spacing gauge and then whatever happened when I got back to the beginning, that's what happened. I, I didn't plan what happened, I just let it happen. Um, let's see. With computerized machines, computerized machines still allow you to adjust tension manually. You just have to turn off that automatic tension adjustment if it's not working for you. I know some machines have that, and to be honest, I want to control that myself, and I typically do. So I just turn that off, and then I make the adjustments for whatever my thread is telling me. Um, okay, so somebody's asking, uh, Marie... Diamico, so I hope I said that correctly. She asked me, what size needle am I using with Magnific Magnifico and Invisifil? So the Invisifil is 100 weight, but the Invisifil is not going through the needle. So the needle is not impacting anything with the bobbin thread. Always, always match your needle to your top thread weight. So this thread here is 40 weight, that's a pretty heavy thread. It's pretty uh, sizable. I like to use a 9014 if I'm working on a domestic machine for that weight. And if I'm on my long arm, I like a 16 needle to start with to see if that's gonna work well. Those are the two standards. And then if performance is an issue, I will adjust whatever I need to. Like if the hole seems too big, I might go down. And if the thread is shredding, I might go up. Okay, so, and then that tension adjustment will take care of that bobbin. You're not having to use the needle to do that. Um, why didn't I start in the... So Ada, I did start in the middle. Right there. That's where we started, right in the middle. So that is correct. And this is not basted, but I did um, steam tack it. It's, wool has a lot of friction, and by putting some heat on it, it actually kind of shrinks and sticks a little bit. So although this isn't spray basted, it's kind of stick basted with my iron. And because we're starting here in the center, if I get any extra, I can just sort of smooth it out and push out towards the center. If a quilt is larger than about fat quarter, I do baste it. But for most of the time when I'm working on something for you guys, I don't baste it because that's just a lot of extra product and a lot of extra time and it's not necessary for something that small. So, let's see. When we're first starting with ruler work, we would want to slow our speed down. So, our, yes. So Donna's question is, when you're first starting out, do you want to slow down? I think that there is a happy medium of speed. If you're sewing and your needle is going like this, I can't even breathe that slowly, right? What happens is the needle pins the fabric and you're trying to move it, but the needle is just coming up so slowly that you can't move. So I think it's important to have at least steady needle movement. It can be slow, but it has to be rhythmically moving at a regular pace because then otherwise the needle is pinning you in place and you're trying to push on your sandwich. In fact, here, let's do a little demo right here. Well, I call this, this is like the speed racer demo. We're just going to be out here on the edge real quick. So let's say... I pulled up my bobbin thread, I'm ready to sew, and I've got my position, and I've got my needle in place, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to sew, ready, I'm revving, right? And then as soon as I pick up my needle, I get this big giant stitch, right? Because I was putting pressure on the sandwich before I started the needle, right? So what, what I want you to do when you're at home when your needle's in position, no tension on your sandwich, right? There should not be any pressure against the needle. Start the gas, right? Let the needle take a stitch and then you can move. That's going to make it so you don't get those big wonky stitches right at the beginning. I'll show you, here's my big wonky stitch right there. See that, that's the first stitch. 
So let the needle start going and then move the sandwich and that will make it much better. And that's really where you can see how that needle pins you in place. Uh, okay, so let's scoot on. All right, sorry, I, I know, I hope you don't mind <laughs> waiting a second till I can see your questions. Oh, you should totally try it. This is such a fun design. It's really easy to, Aerofill is not by Superior Thread. So Donna Dean said Aerofill. Aerofill is by Madeira. Great thread, I've used it. It's wonderful, they have amazing variegated threads. I did my um, Hoffman um, big flower panel with Aerofill thread and it was awesome. No thread breaks, you should definitely try it, it's awesome. <laughs> Um, so let's see. Boy, you guys have a lot of comments. I have to kind of scroll through to figure out what's going on. Okay, well, we're just going to scroll down a little bit so we can kind of get down to the bottom, see if we have any questions, and then we'll keep sewing. Um, oh, okay, Susan, I got you. She was, she was responding that her question got answered after I already talked about it. She already realized what was going on. It's blurry. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's let's start sewing some more. Let's sew a little bit more. All right. Oh, I got a thread here from our little experiment, so I'm going to pull that out because we don't want any threads in our way. So, right here. We started right in the center with this one and we went around. So then here's a question for you. If we do the other side and we try to keep it the same, do we want a mirror image? Yes, I think I do. I think that I want to go around the outside and so I'm going to mirror it, which means that our ruler is going to be rotating the opposite way, which could mean that we need a different use of our spacing gauge. So let's do that. So we're right in the center. This is the one where we said we have that pressed open. And that was our five and a half, so let's get that out. Can you believe it? We might have to rotate it like that. And you know what that means, right? If we rotate it, what do we have to do? Who knows? I'm gonna go down to the bottom and see who gets the answer. What do we have to do if we do that? Tricky, tricky, right? We have to put the grips on the other side if we're gonna rotate it. Who knew that we could do that, right? That's so cool. That means we get our feathers to go whatever direction we wanna go. I love that. I think that that is important for us to recognize. Oh, I put it on the wrong side. <laughs> you guys, I'm such a nut. I put it right on top of the other grip and I wondered why it didn't lay flat. That's so silly. But that's something that I really like about the spin effects. Sometimes if the design is not symmetrical, we can flip it over and we can get more value out of our design. So that's one of the really unique things about Leone's templates. And I, I think that's really a fun thing to learn that you can do so many other cool things with it. So let's get that thread. And well, I think we got our bobbin thread up already. Yes, we did. Okay, now we'll set our needle right into place. And we'll try to mimic the same thing a little bit. So then we can put our little bridge with our 12 inch arc in the middle, which will be cool. So remember that we lined it up on the center line towards the center. So I'll let you see it. And we rotated towards that outside because remember we did this part right here. So now we'll just keep going. And I'll try to go maybe a little bit faster so that we can kind of get to the next pieces. So I'm activating these grips. This ruler is essentially got four corner grips. That's typically how I do it. And so as I go around, you'll see this is kind of like a circle almost. I mean, if we did the whole thing, it's almost like we're going in a circle. So by having those four corners, I can adjust that spacing anytime. And then here is that one inch measure. So let's see what I did with my spacing gauge again. 
I'm so bad, honey. It, it's off. I took it off. I was using it. I know. Did he fall down? Okay, so I'm just going to grab my spare. I always have a spare. <laughs> I never can ever just get by with one spacing gauge. I always have to have two. Okay, the honey says three. Okay, so there's my, there's my one inch right here. And let's just go ahead and we'll start sewing around. So on this side, I want to be a little bit careful of my fingers because I'm on the side where the needle bar is right here. Oh, thank you. Where did he go? He the oh, he dropped back behind the machine. Darn it. Okay, I'm going to put my spare in the safe spot so that I can find him later. This right here, watch out. Okay, don't let, let your fingers get bit on there. Make sure you keep a watch for that. He's a little bit tricky, and I've gotten bit before. So again, we'll just keep going with our one inch. And when we did it the last time, we just kind of finished going around the edge of the orange uh, trapezoid, I think, or kind of parallelogram, diamond, whatever it is. All right, and then we'll just keep rotating right along that B line. I'm kind of keeping this right in line with that. So here I'll show you if we line it up at B, we can use that as the alignment and then we could just move back to this foot. But as I said, you know, we're using kind of a varied spacing and we're not using that 45 degree angle. So this right here is based on that 45. So just like we did it here in the center, we could have used that and just had the overstitching on the top of the arc. but. Whenever you're using random spacing, like what we're doing, you can't really go all the way to B and then expect to rotate and get aligned. So I think it's easier just to rotate from the base because then I have that accuracy right there. So this one will just touch right there. There's a little seam right there that we're going through on the blue. You can see this, this would quilt up pretty quickly for this little guy. So I'm going to give you one more tip. Let's see where we are. I'm trying to see where we changed our size. It's pretty close to where we are right now. We did one more, I think, right across this seam, and then we put the smaller one on. So we'll do this as the last one, and then we'll put that smaller one on. When I come in and I'm touching with my needle right here, you guys can obviously hear that I'm slowing down, but it's important that we make a definitive stop, and then here you're gonna put that one or two stitches right at that transition when you go backwards. The benefit of doing that means that it's going to put a little extra anchor stitch on top and instead of pulling the bobbin as you change directions, then you're gonna have a really nice clean line right there where you change directions. Anytime that you make a big transition in direction, it's important to maybe tack that last stitch there so that you don't drag that bobbin. That's usually where we'll see maybe a little bit of bobbin kind of sticking out um, that got dragged up to the top because there's so much pressure when you change directions, more than you would normally have if you're just smoothly flowing. So let's take this off, and I love it. It's looking so good. All right, so let's go ahead and put that smaller one on, and then we'll just finish that up so we can get um, into that center and put that cute little bridge in there. Oh, let's see. You know what? I used up all of my uh, grips, honey. I'd need that other strip. Yeah, I, I didn't realize I was going to need that. So here, you guys want to see, we'll go ahead and show you how big of a difference it makes to have those grips on. So the grips are up on top. Yeah, we can do it because, because I mean, I'm game for it, right? I think that sometimes people don't realize how big of a deal that the stable tapes make. 
not only do they prevent the ruler from moving, but they have an instrumental feature of helping the actual sandwich to move because they're gripping onto the fabric. So this is my strip. So we'll just do one because I'm just, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> we'll try it though. Let me get these threads out of here. Right there. Try to grab those with my scissors. See, I should cut them off, right? I know people say that to me all the time. Everybody has their process. They just do it their own way, right? So let's just do one. We're using the same space relationship, just like we talked about. So it's just the one inch right at that B space. So you gotta tuck it in just a little bit. So here, I have no grips on the bottom of this, right? And let's see how we do, right? So I don't have to press too hard because if I do, the ruler's gonna slip because there's nothing to prevent it. So here, I'll just try to backtrack I can feel like I have to be really, really gentle. I have to sew really slowly to make sure it's not going crazy. Okay, let's put some on. We tested it. The grips work so much better. You know they do. I love them. They help everybody just stay right in their place. And I, I appreciate that. I feel like I don't have to compress everything so hard. I don't feel like my shoulders get really um, sore as much. My fingertips are not as sore. So definitely worth having these and putting them on. The other thing I like about the stable tape is when I use it and then I put all my rulers back in the bag, then they don't get scratched up because this is like a little cushion for these. It's like a little cloud. And that just helps them all lay nicely together and not scrape each other. I'm gonna say hi while I'm getting this undone. Can you tell I can barely do it? I have the shakes, right? Like I can't help it. Oh, let's see. I love that you guys are all making friends. I can see you guys are like consoling each other and you're sharing details about family things or somebody had a flood. You know, we've, we've gotten to this point where like, I don't even get to in, get into involved in that conversation until I get to read the comments after. But I absolutely love that you guys are such a caring group and you're all full of really great, positive, helpful comments to each other. I feel like we're so lucky to have each other. Okay, so I, I clipped on my little runaway. <laughs> I clipped him on so he can't go anywhere. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll get ourselves around. Oh, I feel so much better. Love it. Okay, now we can sew faster because now I'm not worried that I'm just going to have everybody just fall apart on me. Can you hear that thump thump sound? Like sometimes when I sew? So when I do this one, when I come back to the center, listen to the sound. So like right here, there's a, a big thumpy seam right there. Can you hear that? When I go back, you'll hear it again. Ready? Thump thump thump. And that's because your needle ends up having to go through a lot more layers and it also tightens up the pressure of your foot because your foot's already kissing. So if you're going over a thick seam, then it's kissing uh, a little bit more passionately, I guess you could say. So it just makes it a little bit harder for the needle to work its way through that space. And that's why you've got to maybe push a little bit more or give an, a little bit firmer grip right there when you're going through those spots where the needle is having to go through so many layers. All right, so we're almost there. Are you guys not bored yet, I hope? I hope we're still learning something, something unique. Sometimes when you know, you're know you repeating stuff, I kind of feel like you, are, you might get bored, but I'm not bored, I'm just sewing away. <laughs> I never get bored quilting. How about you, do you get bored? I, I, somebody heard my thump thump. That was from Darla, she could hear it. Hi, Rosalie. Hi, Donna. All right, let's get us finished up so we can add some other fun little detail in here. Does it matter if we're exactly spaced at one inch? Could I eyeball this? Yes, you could totally eyeball this if you want to. This part is so flexible 
And one of the things that I think looks really great with this is, so we created this, and if we did a half, we could just put a really narrow echo. So maybe if we get to some place where we have a new design, we'll do a different pattern for you guys. So we're almost coming in to our existing design. So we're gonna go ahead and just add these in until we connect up to the existing design. I think this will be the last one that we can do right here is getting this, this one in. Yep, and he'll tuck right into his partner right there. So I think you guys have seen my jump stitch before, but we'll do it here. I'm going to just put a few tacking stitches and I'll pick up everything. We're going to take this off because we can. So love that those keys are so easy to use and they really mean that the design is really smooth right there, which I love. So now we need our smaller one, which is our four, our five, our bigger one. Sorry, back to five. And we're gonna just do that echo around until we match up, just like we did with this one. So, let's see, I guess we need to get our thread under there. Oh, let's see, we'll take that back out. There's my thread, and I do want to go right through there, just so we can get everybody to lay down nicely. So see now my tape is going to be on the bottom because we flipped it over, but it's okay. All right, let's see. Should we start over here? I think we'll start on this way. We'll go this way. Okay, let me flip it around so you can get a good view. So there's our center position. And we'll just line it up right there so we can put our foot right in the tip. Right there. And I want to start right in the thread line. So I'm right in the existing stitch line. And I'm just going to do a couple of those tacking stitches right here. All right, and then now we'll echo and we'll go around. So we're looking for the edge of the foot right here to touch right there. And then I think I'll cut some of these threads now that we're tacked in because we do end up with quite a bit since I was rotating around. There's quite a bit of mess in here. So let's see if we can just scoot some of this over and we'll cut some of this. There we go. We need those out of our way. I think it makes it hard to see and it also makes it hard to align up everything. Okay, so right here, what we'll do, you're using this cross line and this center line right there to get lined right up on the center, and then that's gonna give you that space to just echo around. And we'll just keep doing that so we're touching. So each time, we'll just rotate it. The foot's touching now, and wherever it hits on this side, that's all we're worrying about, and we're right on this center line. I can even see that we're right on the seams even at this point. So until we touch, and then right here. So we'll get it lined right up on the middle. And again, I don't have to rotate my sandwich. I can just get everybody lined up so that this cross line goes right through. And I've got this center line to line right up on the center of the design right there. So touch, and then you can just keep rotating and sometimes we will be right on the line. So if you are, you can use those to line up too. I mean, that's perfectly acceptable. Anytime that you have some reference lines that you can use, I think it's worth trying to do that. And then I think, I think we'll just close this one because this will be the last one. That'll get us kind of right into the other one. And then I'll just do some tacking stitches right here. and then we'll just get those threads out of there. And now we'll put in that cute little bridge that you saw. You can use whatever arcs that you have. You don't have to use the 12 inch arc. You could use like a four inch arc, um, but it's good if they have the ability to be parallel. 
you want to create a parallel channel that you can put those little circles in. So we definitely want to do that. Okay, so right here, we've got this space right here. So I'm going to put the arc on here and then we can just make a random rule for how we're going to apply it. Let's get these threads out of here. And then we're probably going to be done for the day at that point because I think we've been going for a little while. What time do we have, sweetie? so we'll just do the bridge and then that'll be it for today so okay so right here we'll try to put an arc right here and then we'll put a double stack we're going to be using this area right here as our transition so if we need to move um, within the design we're going to micro stitch right along those existing stitch lines so I do talk about that a lot in my lives I think it is really really important that we travel and not be afraid of traveling. That's one way that we can always make designs better. So we won't crowd this right here. We'll let that design stand on its own. We can use this center line and line this right up on there. So if, if I touch there, it'll be a quarter inch away. So it'll kind of fill up into this space. Or I could choose a different spacing. It's totally up to me. Let's go ahead and do the quarter inch here. We'll line it right up on the center line right here and we'll just make it past the edge of, the, of this lobe right here to give us a little bit more than that quarter inch. Maybe just one or two stitches more. That's something that we can easily repeat and we'll start over here in the stitch line. So that's where we're gonna pick up our thread out here in the design. So right now, if I pull on that, I can't pick it up. What that tells me is when the needle cycled, it didn't go all the way. So I'm going to rotate my hand wheel just slightly and now I can pick it up. There it is. All right, let me just get it up right there. So I'm gonna set my needle in place. Right there. So it's in the existing stitch line. So we have right here a nice alignment and we're just gonna sew right across until we touch. All right, now if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can just tie it off. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but if you want to, you can just travel a little bit out like this. So I want to get all three lines on this lined up on that. So you can see I can't quite get it right there. It's not quite enough. I need just a couple more stitches. So right there now I can line that up. Once I'm on these three lines right here, the foot is going to add one quarter of an inch and that's gonna give me a one inch space, which I think is a perfect fit for us to be able to put our little half inch circles in there. So then make sure your foot's touching before you start. So I just had to adjust the space right there. And now I'll just sew right over to the other side. Okay, so I'm right in the center right here and wow look it's going to be kind of right along that seam we'll have to see how that goes but i'm sure it'll work out so right here i'm going to get into the middle if this is one inch there should be a quarter inch on each side in order to be in the center of this channel okay all right so let's get our other fun friend out love this guy so I have a really strong affinity for this between the lines, um, half inch circle. I absolutely think that he looks super elegant with feathers. So it's like the pearls in the feathers. So let's go ahead and we'll open him up. Ooh, he is really tight. I think he might be too tight for me to get him out. There we go. Oh, there we go. Had to be really careful to make sure that he was fitting really snug in there. Okay, so again, we're going to put our little tape on there. Now, I'm going to do something really quickly before we sew him, and I'm going to do a quick estimate of how many can fit in there, right? 
So when we put this on, we know that only a certain number is going to fit in there. If I want this to be centered, I can center it. If not, I can just let it be whatever. We can have a full um, circle on this side and we can make this one be underneath, make this partial, and then we can just go around like that as well. So we'll just put this on and we'll do it that way. We'll have one be full and we'll have the other one on the other side. Whatever we get is whatever we get. And that's an easy way to not have to have everything be so perfect. So there's a little circle right there. He goes on the back. And even though this is designed for a straight channel, we can still use the lines to get us in the middle. This circle essentially needs to fit right inside the channel as best it can. When we're going on a curve with this design, we want to make sure that we're paying attention because if the curve is wider on one side than it is on the other, then that's the direction that we need to go so that we don't cut in on the bottom. On the bottom this way, it's wider out here because this is the top of the arc. So I'm going to go on the top of the arc, get, make sure my ruler's touching, and here I'll sew around until I touch and then I'll go back to the center. That way I can make sure that I'm keeping my design from cutting the circle into the circle before. So right there, coming back and centering it each time. The inside curve is narrower, so it's quite possible with these little circles that you would end up cutting into the circle on the bottom. You always wanna go towards the side where the curve is wider and if your curve is changing, like if you have an S curve, that's something right where the S transitions from the bottom to the top, that's where you would have to really be careful to make sure that you could get your circle in there just right. All right, well, I think we're, boy, we fit that in so perfect. I did not plan that, you guys, but it fits perfect, so that's awesome. So we should be good to do that on the other ones. So I'll go ahead and I'll pull this out. And then we'll just talk for one second about what I'm going to do with the rest of the space. But I think we're done sewing for today. So my daughter is turning 15. So we are doing a birthday celebration this evening. And I can't believe that she's 15. <laughs> All right. So let's actually let's pull this out so we can take this off. All right, so now don't say I never showed this because I did, I showed it. I love it, it's such a pretty design. Let me flip it over, oh, well here, we'll do it on this side. I think you can see it better with this orientation. Isn't that so cool? I love it. And so now we have all this space out here, right? And now I can just put I can maybe do some on this side, or you can make this be the center and do a little round here and do a, a center here and a little round here, and then maybe do some parallel arcs right there. So anything that you can do that will fill up this space, we don't have to make it like a full circle, or you can just use the center right here, and maybe this would be a really good place to put the baby right here. So we can take this, the smallest one, and we can just go across using this center mark and you can just put a little fan right there in the center. And then when you're on this side, you're obviously not going to get this, but you're going to have to fill this in. So the way to do that is if you're right here, right, and that's your center, this is where you're going to stop at B. And then you would rotate that and you would be on the top. So that is where B is really powerful is when you need this top part and you can't sew to the bottom to rotate. So that would be an example of when you would, would want to use those letters. And then I'm going to flip it over just so you can see the back. This is going to look really awesome. Yeah, so the between the lines circle, let's see if we can get up a little bit higher so you can get a little better arc on there. Oh, there we go. There, can you see it? It looks awesome, right? So, 
So then I would just put another, another fan with a little one in here, which will kind of fill in this space. And then you can just, wherever these intersect, if this intersects right there, you can make that the center of another fan and fill in as much as can fill and just keep moving out from the center in order to fill that up. So really, really a pretty design. Lots you can do with this and very, very pretty. So it's gonna look great on the back with this matching thread. And then of course on the front, it's gonna look awesome as well. And it adds just a whole nother layer to this piecing. It's gonna create a secondary design that's really gonna be a for, for fabulous emphasis of the piecing. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm getting tired, can you tell? So you guys, thank you so much for being here today. You know that we appreciate you so much. And I absolutely love sharing ideas with you. And I love that you guys are all sharing back with me. So remember, I love to see what you're doing. I'm so nosy. So have a terrific day. I am going to comment. I am absolutely taking off next week. I will not be broadcasting on Easter. And I hope that you're not on for Easter either. I hope you're able to commune with your family and have a terrific dinner and celebrate if you, if you want to do that you know, or whatever you want to do. But anyway, I will not be here. So <laughs> have a great week, guys, and happy quilting. Take care. Oh, and I'll be off next Friday also. No free motion Fridays. Join me tomorrow for Blissful Spirits if you want to sew that fabulous wedding ring quilt. And then I do have a beginning class on Tuesday on the March 30th. So if you need a refresher or you're new and you want some beginner tips, please check out the Sew so Steady event page and sign up for my class on Tuesday with Alamosa Quilts. Okay, guys, bye.